and welcome to Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. Well, sisters, I know we've been talking about a lot of stuff that's mainly like pop culture kind of oriented. Yeah. Like some fun stuff, right? We talked about some nerd stuff. We talked about some books. And that's fun and all. But I feel like we're veering away from advice okay. for you, for Riley. Right? That makes sense. You think so, Taylor? Sure. I think we probably have more to offer in terms of, you know, not just like fun, nostalgic stuff and, and finding out what books you guys are into today, but like maybe we need to delve into something a little meatier. Ooh. So more something serious. to help you navigate those choppy teen waters. Well, all right. What do you got in mind? I was thinking something that I feel like... Uh, Taylor and I are probably not are not qualified as experts on, but at least we we lived through as teenagers. Um, how about we talk about Friends, like the TV show? Well, no, not like the TV. Although I mean, I do enjoy the TV show, Me and too. I know you're a fan. Yeah, but no, not not like the TV show. Um, although a Friends fan cast would probably be very popular. I mean, I'd I'd do it. I'd make yeah. it. Okay. Well, that'll be your next spinoff. Yeah. That'll be the spinoff of By this myself, spinoff. I'll be. Yeah, you do a friends fan cast. Uh, but I thought maybe Taylor, we could teach Riley how to make friends. Well, that's that's uh, not a great idea, as I'm going to put out that right away, because um, I know myself am incapable of that. Uh, I think you've been more successful than I have. Well, that's not saying much. I mean, <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> no, I mean on my end, like making friends. Are you talking about like drawing them in a notebook or like actual human communication? Because uh, I got one of those down and not the other. Not like imaginary friends, although not to. I don't want to insult any imaginary friends out there. Yeah, you like, don't that's... talk bad about Leroy. Leroy was my boy. <laughs> you did have Leroy. Yeah. So there's that. You drew. Oh, you had that weird picture you drew of him. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he just like a hat in a coat or something? No, he was a little boy in a striped shirt with red hair. How did you not know that? Uh, I'm thinking of somebody else. There are a lot of them. Look, I've made a lot of friends in my life. Just most of them are two-dimensional, so I'm fine. Wasn't there like a tin can man? Oh, let's just drop or this. Or potato man? Just, no, that was, that was Fred. Let's just let this go. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Riley... I, I know that it can be hard to make friends when you're a teenager. Yeah. Right. And um, I know for me, it was always a struggle to figure out, like, how do people talk to each other and then want to talk more and then do things together? Yeah. How does that work? Um, <laughs> it's very robotic. You, how do I talk to other human and then proceed to have activities with other human? And how does other human enjoy this? interaction other human are you happy to have my acquaintance please on a scale of one to ten rate me <laughs> i actually think i actually think that that my problems with it are, are are good for you in a sense because i have i've become very introspective about it why am i why is this a struggle why is this an area i struggle with because i think like in a in a group setting at a party or something like that i'm actually pretty good in those settings i'm, I'm pretty good with like a big group and like just the casual kind of like I would I would go as far as to say I'm sometimes the life of the party. You are. <laughs> party don't start till Sid walks in. <laughs> I would say. Uh, but but when it came to just like, especially in high school, like forming those kinds of tight bonds with somebody, it was very difficult for me. Um, has that been something that's been hard for you? Really? Yeah. I mean, like I didn't last year, my freshman year, I didn't really have that many friends. I had like a friend that I only kind of knew. Mm-hmm. I just kind of sat at lunch with and that was it. But then like, I didn't really have to try. <laughs> I didn't really do anything. I was just kind of sitting in Spanish class this year and this girl came up to me and was like, hey, be in our group message. Come to a football game with us. I was like, I mean, I'm in no position to pass up friends. So be in our group message is how you ask somebody to be your friend? I guess now. I guess one that's what of you us, do. One of us. That's not how <laughs> friendship works, I thought. <laughs> You is just this how like, it works in the modern era? I don't know. Is that like uh, that you just got tapped on the shoulder and you're in a s- secret society, except it's really just a group message? She's been acquired. <laughs> I leveled I mean, up. I'm confused in that. How Would many it friends? that easy? Yeah, really. I, nobody ever invited. Well, I mean, there were, maybe it's just because there weren't group messages when we were in high school. If there had been a group message. Group note passings? That wasn't a thing. <laughs> No, we did a lot of note passing, but it was usually like a one-on-one kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that, that was super intimate. 
Yeah. And you and you would have secret codes that you would put in your notes. You know. You would? You didn't? No. Um No, that might be pretty straightforward. Um I what were the secret codes you had in in your in your notes? Well, it wasn't anything in particular. It would be like, okay, so you know how people like to use the abbreviations in notes like BFF and LYLAS, sure. love you like a sister and those kinds of things. Uh, we would try to write whole notes with like big sentences that were all abbreviated and it would be up to the other person to try to like puzzle out what that could possibly mean. I don't know if that was a common thing or if that was just us. <laughs> it was largely just like, it was a sentence that was all abbreviated and what it what it really stood for was like, you like Joe, I like Craig, ha ha. Yeah, I, I kind of like <laughs> lose my ability to translate after like lol, so I can't really follow you down that road. It does sound like a dark one, which with, withholds my interest. But uh, I think I, I think that makes me SMH. Shaking my head. Is that a thing? I always that thought that meant so much head. hate. So I don't know. Maybe that was me reading into it. I thought it was smacking my head. Oh. Shaking my head. I thought it was kind of like, oh, if you knew, like, if you, you, like, you know, ah. If you knew it was like an action verb followed by my head, why was smacking the first thing that came to your mind? I don't know. I thought it was kind of like saying, don't. That's like Homer Simpson? Really? Yeah. That's, That's what I thought. The only ever, the only ever act, the weird teen at- acronym that I ever I can can really remember being like emotionally resonant was uh, getting getting a, a a boy that I really really had a crush on in uh, middle school give me a, a L Y L A S in my yearbook because that oh, was ouch. love you like a sister and that ouch. was just oh, like a sister. It's not which even is, legal. Which is worse than friend zone, I guess, getting <laughs> sister, sister zone. zone. I mean, we are in West Virginia, but it's still not cool. Hey. Hey, now. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you, you can't move out to Brooklyn and make fun of us. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. Uh, but but just also, as far as emotional note content, I, I did, and friends, um, I did once have a, a, a lady friend that I was fighting with, and uh, she passed me a note in class. Um and it, it simply had the lyrics to No Doubts, Don't Speak, uh, contained within it. And that was <laughs> maybe actually the most emotionally devastating note I ever received. That's as rough as it gets. It's all ending. We better stop pretending. Who we, we are. are. <laughs> when you dole out some Gwen Stefani on somebody, you mean business. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Now, that took Riley, some work. in this group text, so like you, you've instantly become friends with how many people now? I guess at that point, there were like nine other people in there. So instantly, you've got nine friends. Yeah. And you're just expected <laughs> to hang out with them and be but like close to all of them, like share intimate details of your life with all nine of them by virtue of the, the group text, the group I message. I don't really know how friends work. So like, <laughs> I guess that's what I was supposed to do, but I didn't do that. But these are your friends, right? But, like, I only knew two of them previously. One well, of them I went to elementary school with, one of them I did theater with. And everybody else was just in the group message. Yeah. The GM. The GM. That's what that's what it's called, I have uh, I learned. I think it's referred to as the GIM. The GIM. Is it? The, is it? No. Oh. oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it took me a while to figure out when you kept saying the judge. GM. <laughs> the GM. The GM. I was sitting there thinking, what is the See, GM? I, I think general manager because I work at my <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Don't like the hip kid on you. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant. I was like, the GM. Oh, wow. sure. the, GM is know. texting you. You've done wrong. <laughs> like, grandma? <laughs> yes. Yes. Our our grandmother is texting that with my Gma. I didn't know what that meant. So... I, do you have individual texts going with each of these people that you're in the group text with as well so that you can have like more personal conversations? Um, I have personal texts with like two of them, the same two I mentioned before. What if you had just had like private texts with just a couple people as opposed to this giant conglomerate? Would that have been okay? Is that acceptable within the rules of the GM? I think so. I mean... Yeah, like just texting them privately because that's like, you know, a one-on-one conversation. Because you, you, do you feel like you really get close to all these people this way? No, no. I mean, I don't even know like half of their parents' names. 
because I, I want to contrast <laughs> or birthdays uh, names or the, and, par- and parental and or birthdays and parental names are very important to friendship <laughs> they really are especially birthdays because don't you guys get each other presents yeah mm. but like do you get chapstick gifts that's what taylor and i used to chapstick call them chapstick gifts yeah that like, was for you, you get your like main the friends you actually cared about like real gifts but then you gotta get the girls you gotta like keep up appearances with uh just something so you get them like flavored chapstick yeah, like one of those little, what was it, like Bonnie Bell? Yeah. And they have like lip smackers. Lip smackers. They have like, the yeah, yeah, those packages of like, like sodas. Exactly. Different soda flavor, like candy flavored chapsticks. And mm-hmm. uh, at, around Christmas, around the holiday season, we would have just a bunch of them in our backpack. And if somebody gave you a present, like sprung one on you, like, ha ha, present, you'd be like, ha ha, chapstick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it was a defensive measure. It was a- we used to buy that and like weird earrings from Claire's. That we would have in our bag just to give to somebody, like, just in case. That was just a defensive block of friendship. (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha, lip smackers. Counterattack, the cherry earrings. When I think back, you know, because I was not, like I said, I wasn't very good at making friends. I knew that there were all these groups of people who hung out and did things, and I didn't know how to get get to there. Uh, The one, the one of my closest friends all through high school that I actually did a good job with the reason we became friends was we just happened to be sitting next to each other in drama class and we, the teacher said something and we both didn't care for it. And so we both at the same time kind of went and like rolled our (laughs) eyes. And then we looked at each other like, Hey, you feel your mutual angst (laughs) means friendship, mutual disgust. (laughs) And then we were, we were fast friends. And so like we, he was my buddy and uh, your buddy. Yeah. And when I, and when I had, the same lunch period as him. We, I had somebody to eat lunch with. When I didn't, I ate lunch by myself a lot and read uh-huh. a book. And then, I mean, now I did, and I will say, like, I would have groups. Like, I had some friends that were, like, my theater friends. And when I was in a show, I'd have those friends. And when I was in show choir for a while, I had my show choir friends. Um, and I even, for, like, a brief moment, had, like, a f- group of friends who probably would have been considered popular. I was going to say, I've heard stories of you being with a popular crowd for a considerable amount of time. I there was there was a summer that I somehow cracked into like the popular crowd, um, but mm-hmm. but I was but like I, as you can see it was all it was all brief. I was never very good at maintaining those friendships, and um, when it came to like a new environment and like new people and trying to make friends with people, oh, I never knew what to, what do you say? Like you walk up to somebody and say like, so you've been seeing that stuff about the election on cnn lately well that's something that's what you said to make friends in high school (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah actually hey i I would actually counter that with you know what if that's where your interest lies that is perfectly fine because i I will and i mean this isn't the best testament to how to make friends because i guess i don't know i i definitely didn't have a lot but i super wasn't bothered by that like you you know like i i ate a lot of lunches alone too like in the bathroom not because I like, like, didn't want to like play the game to find someone to sit with. I just like I was fine with myself. I mean, I had my buddies, and don't get me wrong. Like, everybody I have has like a solid origin story, like why we were friends, and a lot of those people are still friends to to this day with me. But like, I, I didn't ever feel super bad about the fact that I didn't have friends. Maybe that makes me weird. I don't know. No, I don't think so. But I only say that because <laughs> I never felt super bad about it either. Like I recognized it and I, I saw it as like a very practical deficiency in myself. Like, hmm, there must be some something is inaccurate in my programming. <laughs> well, so you, you, you <laughs> tried to about. fix it. I was just like, nah. <laughs> like I, now you, you had some friends though. No, I did, but that's what I'm saying. Like I, I had friends, but they were those people that were, were worth, they were, well, I think because that, that chapstick gives idea kind of was like well wait if it's the kind of friend that i care about them as much as chapstick they're probably not my friend and so we probably shouldn't keep up this charade <laughs> like, I, friend... I think you're being a little hard on chapstick right now but okay i mean, I'll allow it. Wrong, but, uh, <laughs> with flavored chapstick is a, is a is a great thing um but i i don't i don't necessarily think it qualifies a friendship uh I don't know, like I like um, you know, you were talking about your your friend of mutual disdain. One of my earliest friends, um, uh, she was uh, we were in the same elementary school, and it was around the time that I guess the re-releases of the Star Wars movies with added digital effects had been announced, which granted turned out to be like a bad idea, but uh, 
<laughs> you know, we were talking about them. And then, like, it was very quickly, like, that's not a cool thing to talk about. But the two of us kind of, like, made eye contact. Like, that's a cool thing to talk about, though. And then, like, after lunch, I came back to my desk. And she put a little Yoda action figure that she hid in her desk on, my, on, mine, on mine. And I had, like, a note that was, like, sleep over, will you? And... <laughs> And for as many friends as I didn't have, the friends I did have were all that those kind of people. They were weird. They were unique. They were so loyal. They were like, like, like so on point with my interests, and my weirdness. And those are the only people I ever even cared to have time for. Honestly, like, it wasn't worth it for me to invest in people that weren't that that didn't have something intellectually or emotionally to give to me. Well, I I think I can understand what you're saying, and I think that I kind of went the same route in the sense that. Well, I, I still had, I think, fewer friends. I definitely value quality over quantity. I think yeah. that's a really good point. Yeah. Riley, in your experience, though, it sounds like you've gone kind of the opposite route. You just acquired <laughs> yeah, the, the a mass of friends. Bargain. Well, <laughs> I'll scope with those friends. <laughs> but I know that that has, has been kind of rough, though, too, right? Yeah, not the, not the best. Like you feel like you maybe haven't bonded with each of those people yeah, I'd say at this point, like September of the of this school year, when they were like, "Hey, come to a football game with us," I was like, "Oh my god, so many friends!" And now it's like I lost all my lives in this video game, where like I leveled up and got all these friends. I lost all my lives. I'm starting back over from the beginning because I don't have Aww. any friends. <laughs> Wait, it's not. Please, it's, I don't know. Like, I think that that doesn't sound. My my meager <laughs> experience with friendship that doesn't sound like friendship, like. Like, if it's something you can lose that easily, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's really where you should be. Like, are are, are these, like, are these cool? Are they, are they cool girls? Can I ask? Yeah. No, they're cool I'd say girls. They are. That's, that's so above my level of understanding. That's a, yeah, that's, a, you're... You're definitely playing a higher level of difficulty yeah. if you're running think, with the cool crowd. You guys have like you gotta learn like the cool words to say and like the secret handshakes and um Do you have those? I don't maybe that's why they're not my friends anymore. Maybe I never <laughs> learned the handshakes and and the code words and that's why they're not my friends. No. Well, I just wonder if it's you know, a big difference is when I think back to the the friends that I did have, each of us built like our own personal one-on-one -on -one relationship mm -hmm. and then there were other people that kind of like I did have uh, there were moments in my life where I would have like a group of friends but I would have very distinct personal relationships with each person in that group mm -hmm. um, and there weren't a lot of like just random people that I spent tons of time with or certainly talked to a lot who I didn't have some sort of personal connection with you know so the idea yeah. of like a big group of people that I spend a lot of time with and some of them I'm not particularly close to would have been very strange mm -hmm. Um, and that creates more like, it's more like a web of friends as opposed to what you've got right now, which is sort of like, you know how like Pee Wee Herman had that big ball of foil that he just kept adding new pieces of foil onto? Yeah. Sort of like that model of friendship, uh huh, <laughs> which doesn't work as well because like you're not really connecting to all those random pieces of foil that, you know, Cowboy Curtis are bringing right. and right. Dottie. And yeah. Now I just have like a ball of foil friendship. Instead of the uh, spider web woven, this friendship. is a, a very. I, I don't think that friendship has as much in in uh, uh, similar to Katamari Damacy as you think it does. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly, exactly what, what it is. is. <laughs> that's what friendship is. You just roll your friendship ball around, and then stuff sticks to it. Yeah, and then people people stick to it. I guess. See, I think that hasn't worked for you though. It sounds like you have not necessarily found friends that are. Like sticking that to my ball of friendship that are sticking to your ball of, well that have connected to, with you very well that you have been able to build like strong personal you know because a friendship especially in your teenage years can be very intimate because you're going through so much change and so much crazy stuff is happening mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out who you are and so like you the people you bond with you can bond very tightly with yeah if you allow that to happen yeah or if they're the kind of people you want to bond that closely with exactly Right. Which it sounds like has not been no. your experience. Yeah. Because, I mean, it sounds like to me that you uh, the problem that you were describing you had is not the follow-up, like a follow-up appointment with these friends. <laughs> like the... Yeah. Is, that, is that correct? Yeah. I, I was very... If you're describing friendship situations by appointments, I think that we're, uh, we're already in questionable territory. Just two cents for you. I, no, I know. Well, and I know I was because I know my problem was always with 
with the follow up, the follow through, uh, I would find like I would meet somebody at school or at a party or at you know on a softball team or something, and we would become friends and like we would connect and um, they would you know we would decide like we want to spend time together, we want to hang out together, and then I would be busy or I would have homework or just whatever you mm-hmm. know as time would pass and I wouldn't necessarily check back in with them right. until I had free time again. To like, oh, okay, I have time. There's that friend I enjoy. We we shall spend time together now. We shall. <laughs> and that's not really how friendship works so much. I have learned that people expect like if you're their friend, like you check on them more. Like mm-hmm. you like you want to connect more. And it, it was never a want thing. It was always very practical for me. Like, well, I just don't have time for this right now. And I'm not going to see you very often because we don't have any classes together. Or like this show just ended. So I'll see you with the next one. It was it was very practical. It wasn't emotional. And I think that that sort of like Vulcan-esque approach uh-huh. <laughs> to that's that's a Star Trek reference that okay. that was not uh, the best for friending. <laughs> I would say say no. I mean, I don't know. I'm not good at it, but I'd say no. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I don't think a Vulcan is a good model for friendship. Um, I mean, but, I understand that you have emotions. I do not feel them, but I understand it. <laughs> I will attempt to recognize said emotions with my brain. Mm, brain is incapable. Uh, I, I think that, you know, it is true that friendship requires uh, a lot of work early on. But then I go back to my original statement that the people that are worth it generally make you more, uh, I think, enticed to do the work. So I, I think true. if it feels like a job, then it's it's not friendship. I mean, there's a diff- big difference between like, oh, my God, I'm super tired. I want to stay in bed all day, but I want to hang out with this cool person. Then, oh, man, this person wants to hang out with me. I'm looking for reasons to be tired and not do it, which yeah. we, we've experienced both. And recognizing the difference is super important. I, I think that's very true because I, I've now that I am I am better at it too in my adult life. I look back at at people that I liked that I appreciated in my teen years though that if I had been a little more open with and just put forth a little bit more effort to show that like I I do care about you I do value our friendship we're cool people um, looking back and maybe part of my isolation was not that everybody else was just a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel sometimes did you guys ever see that episode of 30 rock where that's Liz what Lemon i was gonna say where go- she goes to her high school reunion and she's like all these people hated me they were so mean to me i was bullied so badly and then she gets to this high school reunion they're all like no you were just really mean to us <laughs> i feel like sometimes i worry that that was me like i look back and i always felt so excluded and then i think was i maybe not excluded was i maybe just like I don't know, the kind of Daria to everybody. And so nobody really wanted to hang out with me. Was that what happened? I don't know. But as an adult now, I, you know, the friends that I have, I definitely, I want them to know that like, I care about them and I make an effort to make sure that, that I remember all the things that are going on in their lives. And so that I can like check on them and be like, Hey, I know that thing was going on. Are you doing okay? Or like, Hey, I'm happy for you. Those kinds of things. But also I think about them and I'll be sitting there and think like, man, I got to have dinner with so-and-so, or I really want to text this person and find out how they're doing today because they've just been on my mind or like Mm -hmm. something funny will happen and I'll go, "Ah, I know exactly who would appreciate that. Um, So it is easier. You're right. In the sense that like people that I truly connect with now that are are my good friends now, it's not so, it's not so much of an effort as it used to be because I want them in my life. Yeah. I want that connection. Right. So when, yeah, when you find when you find quality people that you connect with, and I when I say that I shouldn't say, you know what that insinuates? I'm making the same mistake that high school Sydney made. Just because somebody doesn't necessarily float your boat as a friend, just because like they say something and you think I do not understand you or see the world from your perspective, mm-hmm. does not necessarily mean they're a, a low quality person. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. Oh. It just means maybe that's not who you want to chill with. Oh, that's a thing. Me- yeah, I mean, like there's I don't I don't. It's few and far between, quote unquote, low quality people. I, I think it's just more about giving yourself the option to find the people that you get along with. And and you also, you know, by making that void in other people's lives, you you allow them to seek out the people that they do get along with. Like, that's that's OK. Yeah. Let me throw you all like a like a what if, though, okay. that, that has definitely happened to me. I'm saying like it's a hypothetical situation. But what if you had to eat out. one person in the room that you're in right now? Who would you eat? Is that what it is? 
No. no. Oh, why okay. are you why are you what? thinking about that? Oh, I'm I, glad I was, we're not in the room with you. <laughs> I just thought that was everybody's first prison what if. Uh move along. I'm I'm alone in this room, so don't worry about it. <laughs> um uh yeah, this what if this hypothetical situation that definitely happened. Um so what if these friends that you made in this one mass group uh um aren't good not just good people like you don't agree with what they say but they're not good friends like like they uh ignore they're not you. Nice to you they ignore you when you text them privately about something they ignore you when you text them a group message but then they respond to someone else they leave you out of stuff they talk about you they laugh at you and talk about you like literally behind your back because they sit in the seat behind you in math class um those aren't your friends those aren't good friends. Those okay. aren't. No, those so aren't, that's not like not your friends. That's not like a Rallo problem. That's no, like that's a, an everybody problem. It's like a friend problem. And I, I think that the difference is, is that maybe Riley, like you, you've tried to, to maybe get along with what you feel are the people that are have more social currency than I think the people that Sydney and I just kind of went along with. And that's nothing bad on you. I think that's a very normal human thing. Lot everybody kind of does that at some point. Maybe yeah. we figured out earlier than you that that was not that was not to be our lot. But I mean, <laughs> like, I think that no matter what, and I mean, you know, like we're talking about like, oh, you're, you're friends with popular people, but like, I, no matter what group, and this is something that took me a long time to learn because like, you know, I was in a, involved with lots of more like subcultures, like smaller groups that still were like clicky, like, you know, be it like art kids or like punk kids, like no matter what, you're always going to find a group of people that cling together and define themselves by who they exclude. Like, doesn't yeah, matter what your fashion true. sense is. Yeah. Like what your, what your motto is like. And I think whenever you find yourself among those people, the best thing you can do is to extricate yourself because that is l sacrificing yourself to the group. And that's always a bad idea. Yeah. No, I, I think I that's agree. true. And I think sometimes you need to recognize it's hard in high school because unlike I've said, I've admitted when I look back, maybe I was the, maybe I was the jerk. <laughs> maybe I didn't know it. Uh, in high school, I think when you're a teenager, you're, you're trying so hard to figure out who you are and what that's all about. And a lot of that has to do with contrasting yourself with other people, which all of a sudden means excluding people. Mm -hmm. And I think that you see a lot of behavior that people probably look back on as adults and regret and feel pretty bad about. And that doesn't excuse it. And it doesn't mean that it's okay if people have been crappy to you at school, right. obviously. I right. mean, personally, that makes me very mad and I want to yell at them, but that's because I'm your sister and I love you. Right. Um, but I think that maybe those people just have a lot of maturing to do. Mm -hmm. And your best bet is to maybe find other people to but, chill with. But like, okay, here's my other what if. Um, what if the other groups of people are groups like this one, except not the one that I'm in? You mean like any group of people you might end up with might just be just as, as hurtful and catty on the inside? No, like, like, I feel like in every group in high school, if you define yourself by a clique or like a certain group of people you hang with, like... There's always going to be ones that are the cool ones, if that makes sense. I mean, if you're in a big enough group of people, oh, yeah, yeah. if you're in a group of like three people, three is not a good number. If there's like four of you, there's not going to be two of you that are cooler than the other two because then you have the same amount of people. But like if you're in a group of 13 people and four of them or five of them classify themselves as the ones who make the decisions, who have the cars, so they pick people up. They're the ones who have the <laughs> sleepovers. Yeah. They're the ones that are making all the like calling all the shots, then I feel like in every group that's big enough, there's always people like that. I feel like it's just the way that, I don't want to say it's the way that teenagers are because I don't want to like generalize all teenagers, but I feel like that's almost how all teenagers are. There's a, are you saying sort of like there's always like a moderator for every group? Yeah. For every, for every Facebook page, I there's mean, a moderator, there's a moderator for every friend group. <laughs> I mean, like, the people that I see as popular, I'm sure there is a large percentage of the school and of the grade that I'm in that does not think of these people as the popular people. They sure. might not even know who these people are. So it's not like these are the popular people of the whole school and I'm not friends with them now, so I have no one. 
I'm sure there are people who are in other groups of friends. Like maybe there are people who are all like classify themselves as quote unquote like art people or theater people but at the school. You're worried who, that each of these groups will have their own little mini who dictator. Who have their own little dictators who see themselves as like the leaders of the group. Sometimes. Yeah. When, and sometimes that what that necessitates, though, I will say that I I would I would probably venture this was the track I took in high school. Mm-hmm. I was a free agent. <laughs> yeah. I was not assigned to any one group. Mm-hmm. I kind of drifted from group to group throughout my high school career, which means that the sacrifice you make is that I didn't have that steady group of people that I knew, oh, there's something going down this weekend. Who am I going to hang with? Like, right. I, I never had that. I It was always kind of up in the air. And there were lots of weekends where it was me and my... Carol King CD. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, there, there were lots of weekends that it was just me because of that. So I traded that. But what I got in return is I never felt like I was at the mercy of those kinds of like leaders, those right. group moderators. I, right. I never felt that. But but it really necessitated being a free agent. Yeah. I was a rogue high school student. <laughs> I feel like I would be okay with that because a large majority of the things that I do outside of school are things that I could do alone or things that I enjoy doing alone, like, uh, you know, reading or writing or doing theater. Mm-hmm. That's not alone, but that's not the people I go to school with. I'm not involved at like theater at school. So it's kind of all the people I do theater with, none of them go to my school. So I'm either with these people that I never see during the week, unless I'm at rehearsal mm-hmm. or during a show, or I'm, at this place where I have to function somehow. And it's, I always say, I wish school was just like, you go to class and then you go home. Like, is that, is that how college is? You go to class and you go home. Like you don't have to deal with all the in-between stuff. More or less. I mean, the in-between stuff is fun. Yeah. But I mean, you don't have to worry about like having someone to sit with at lunch or having to be in this class with these people that no. you know are bad people, you know. Also no, talk no, about. you have. It's so much. There's so much more freedom in college, and then yeah. yeah, no, it's not. It's not. You don't get those clicks at all. There aren't those groups. I mean, for the most part, I would assume. Of course, I went to a, a like a a smaller but not tiny college. Right um, now, Taylor, your college. Exp- well, this is a whole thing about college. I was going to say we'll yeah. go into that some other time. Oh, we'll get into if it necess- necessarily gets better. Unfortunately, I don't have the answer you want for that. We'll have to do an episode on that. Yeah. We can we can contrast our points of view but on that. The, the fact is, and yeah. this is coming from somebody who's had 30 years and only so many friends, and uh, there have been a lot of lonely years. Um, but the one thing is that I've always preferred to allow myself to be myself versus sacrificing parts of myself to make other people okay with me. And I don't want to say that's been easy, but it's been better. So yeah, that's... That's not, <laughs> that's not the most comforting advice, but I can say that, you know, like when it comes to friends and especially the high school politics, like you have to, when you, when you do find those people that even if it's one or two people in your lifetime that give you something versus make you cut yourself down to fit a mold, they're, they're worth it. And I know it's hard when you don't necessarily have those people in your life, but I do think that finding those people and fostering those friendships, um, will ultimately make you happier even if you don't have a 15-person text message to take part in. (laughs) Right. And I feel like this is like sort of like update, like breaking news. Uh, I'm not in the group message anymore. I decided to leave. So I'm sorry if if people will miss stories of the group message. I have plenty of other stories. I think I'm going to miss stories of the group Um, message. That was just so Um, bizarre to me for that reason, but I think everything else is good about that. I think it's better that you leave the group message. I think it's better that um, you you become a free agent because it allows you to open yourself up in a way that I recognize fully. I was not completely open and I'm still, as an adult, still work to be, to finding people who would, who were more like me to like, um, in the, there's a book by Kurt Vonnegut. I know you know this, Taylor, but Riley doesn't, called Cat's Cradle. Mm-hmm. And in it, they talk about finding the people who are sp- you're supposed to be with, like not romantically, just like with, mm-hmm. just like the people in your life and they're in your caress. And you've got to, it's important to find those people. And you can't find those people unless you're open to it and looking for it. And I think maybe a group message 
made some like false walls in your life, built mm-hmm. false barriers around your friends and what friends are. And if you open that up, I think it's scary at first. You're kind of in a free fall, mm-hmm. but I think where you land is going to be a lot better. Yeah. I would also like to point out, I'm not completely friendless. I have a best <laughs> friend. Like I have, I have my, my person, I guess, my lobster, if you will, if we're still referring to friends, except not in like a romantic way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she goes to college three and a half hours away. So she does, she only comes in like once every two months. So I have a best friend that I can always talk to if I need someone. But, uh, I don't know. You have us. I have, I, I'm related to you all. (laughs) So we don't count? You count. But I mean, that's like, do you count mom and dad as your friends? Yeah. They're your friends? Are mom and dad not my friends? I think they're your... Did mom tell you she wasn't my friend? Are you in a group message without me? I'm sorry, Sydney. (laughs) I hate to break it to you this way. Hey, if you're not included, I'm not included. Then again, I'm the weirdo that lives up in New York. I'm not included in any of your stuff. You're included. You're on our show. Well, right now. (laughs) You're on our show forever. Forever and for always. For all of eternity, as long as we all shall live. This is our very public podcast group message that we are sharing with you. (laughs) Until until I get cut out of the group message. We will never cut you out of the group message. We actually do have a group message, (laughs) the three of us, but it just consists of a lot of, uh, are you ready to record? And a lot of um, emoji sending. Yeah. And Riley named it, which I didn't know was a thing you could do with group messages. You didn't know that? No, she named it Sea Stores. Sea Stores. I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. I thought it, I almost it just named had the it names one eggplant people. emoji, one fried shrimp emoji, and one drug emoji. <laughs> uh, I now Riley, I already know this story, but I wanted you to share it, and I wanted you to share it. with I hope Taylor. you're talking about the same story. I'm thinking. I, of. I think so because Taylor hasn't heard it yet. Uh, because th- this just happened today. So Riley. Now, it could be difficult. I've got to lead into it. It could be difficult uh, leaving the group message in terms of like lunch, like where you would sit at lunch. And one suggestion I had is that since it's spring and it's going to be lovely outside, perhaps you should consider sitting outside on the, I don't know what you call it, the courtyard, Well, the quad, Sydney, sitting the, outside at school the, to eat your lunch. The courtyard is off limits to all students in all of the school now. Why is that, Riley? Why why wouldn't you be allowed to sit outside and eat lunch? I'm trying to do this without laughing. A girl, a freshman girl, decided to um, use the bathroom. Riley, just say it. She decided to poop outside <laughs> in the grass next to the outdoor courtyard. And someone filmed it on their phone and put it on Snapchat. The Snapchat got to Twitter and the Twitter's all over Twitter. And the principals found out about this girl pooping in the woods right next to the outdoor courtyard. So now no one's allowed to eat lunch outside and that girl is suspended from school. And the, the sign says you're not allowed to eat lunch outside because you keep leaving your trash out here, which I guess... I guess in a way we're leaving waste. But you're leaving waste. That's quite accurate. You're leaving waste outside. Oh, why did she? Why did she poop outside? <laughs> Someone asked her on Twitter, oh. like, like girl, why couldn't you just wait? Like the bathroom's right inside. Like really, where the courtyard is. If you walk in through the door about ten steps, you're at a bathroom. Mm-hmm. So it's not like she had that far to go. But someone was like, girl, why'd you poop out there? She was like, I just had to go. It just happened. You know, well, I, I, I mean, that's insane. But all I can think about is, and I'm sorry, it's just that poor girl. Because high school's hard enough without you being known as the quad pooper. She made the decision <laughs> to poop outside. She could have made the decision we all, this is the thing that to walk me. inside. This is the thing that terrifies me about your generation is that we all make, you, do you know how many dumb, 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 dumb decisions you're going to make before you're at all capable of intelligent decisions? And I'm talking to every person. I don't think I'm person. ever going to decide to poop outside. <laughs> no, look, I'm not saying, but you're going to have your own poop outside moment. And maybe it's not exactly pooping outside. But God, the idea of everybody having a camera on their phone and being able to document it, like if half of the dumb stuff and Sydney, come on, you know, the dumb stuff that you do. And I'm I'm 30 and I'm well, still not capable of in- completely intelligent thought. Like that's all I can say is that poor girl. I will say I thought that poor girl. And then she got on Twitter and someone was like, why do you let your friend put that video of your going? She was like, oh, I told her to put it out. 
Okay, and they that's were like, a little weird. And they were like, well, you thought claiming it, then she could like, like be the one that laughs along. But well, she know. got all the other freshmen to defend her for her decision to poop outside. <laughs> and uh, there were all these people who had graduated <laughs> from high school, from our high school, several years ago, like five, six years ago, making, um, which I actually thought was really funny, a poll on Twitter that just said, what do you think she used to wipe? <laughs> <laughs> No, this, just, this terrifies me. I mean, this is a funny story, but gosh, today is just the world you live in, the availability to be in this series episode in the light. No, it's just a story about a girl pooping outside on school I know. Property. I'm sorry. I got to think in the long run what this means for this poor girl. Have you not seen those horror movies where the girls go into the computer and kill people because they make fun of them in films? That's the ultimate fear. Here's what Here's what I hope. Here, so okay. when... When at Riley's prom, not Riley, at Riley's school's prom, she was she has not gone to prom yet. They weren't allowed to twerk, and so all of the students staged the great, the are, great are you, twerk in are you of 2016. That since we're not allowed to to eat outside, we're all gonna poop outside. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, do not stand for this. You twerked when you shouldn't twerk. You poop when you can't poop. <laughs> I fight the system. Fight the man. I mean, I guess, is that the way to I don't protest think that's this? the way. No, I think that the way to, I don't think that something needs protesting. Don't get me wrong. No one should poop outside. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to go to such extreme measures. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe I they think, need to stand up for their rights. Civil I, disobedience through poopy yeah, you can play. in the courtyard. Oh, you're right. To poop. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can twerk after. To celebrate. Oh. No. This would be a bad, bad situation all around. Oh, 90% people. of our courtyard is concrete. And such people so. in it. <laughs> did, did, did we help you make friends? <laughs> yes. This this discussion of the great Huntington um, uh, poop, poop strike of, of 2016 has helped me make so many friends. I have new friends right now. I'm going to go meet text, them. Ask everybody to poop in the yard with you, and then we'll see where that goes. All right. I'm going to go meet my pooping friends. <laughs> Bye, guys. Well, I, Yikes. Riley, I would, I would say that um, you're on the right track. I think yeah. you are. I think you'll get there. I think just stay open to it. Like Taylor said, I think it's quality over quantity meaning like it's not about having the most friends or the ones that are dictated the coolest or the Mm -hmm. most popular by outside forces it's people you connect with that make your life better because friends should enrich your life and make it more interesting and more exciting and more fun and happier and if they're not doing that then are they your friends i would say no i don't think they are and that doesn't mean they can't be somebody else's friends it just means maybe yeah they're each other's friends all of them. You just got to find your... It's not mine. Well, and Riley, really, I don't even think you need to be insecure about that. You don't even... I don't... They don't even sound like they're probably that good of friends to each other. But that's not... Yeah, I don't think they are because I've heard fair. them talk about each other a lot. Like, I've heard them all say bad things about each other. Don't fall into that trap. No, you just you just cut those people out of your life, honestly. Or 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 give them room to grow. But, like, that's not... They've, that's not they've done been... That's they've not, done been cutted. And maybe if they're really they're good friends... Cut. You know, like Monica and Phoebe on Friends, uh-huh. like when yeah. Phoebe cut Monica out of her life yeah, and then that, Monica clawed her way I, back in. I, yeah. I let you talk about Friends, but seriously, I will I will walk away right now. I will just walk away. <laughs> okay. I know we're like two seconds from the end, so that's totally fine. But like, seriously, this is not a Friends cast. I'm not okay, no more friends. friends. Can I ask? Can I ask a favor, though? In the future, will you please explain to me what ghosted means? I will. Sisters. I will. We will. Because I don't know what you mean by that. But ghosts are scary. Will is a team. Okay, I would appreciate that. Well, um, thank you, my sisters. Of course, for for joining me on this on this podcast on this friends fan cast. <laughs> um, and Taylor signing off for, forever for raising awareness about uh, the uh, with all of you <laughs> for raising awareness about the fact that you are not allowed to poop outside at our local high school. You mm-hmm. should protest this. Yeah. I guess by pooping outside. I'm I not advocating that. Your yard. Somebody might listen to me. Uh, thank you to everyone who listened, even when we talked about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Thank if you. If you're to- still here and you didn't just turn off our episode after you heard us say the word poop, thank you. Yes. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> uh, thank you to uh, everybody who's been commenting about our show, uh, tweeting at us at Still Buff. 
uh, talking about it on the Facebook group. It's a really cool group of people with all kinds of uh, funny things to say and book, book recommendations. Suggestions. Yeah, there's book a book club. club. Uh, what What are you guys reading, Taylor? What's the first uh, we are reading Selection. John Dies at the End, which is uh, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, super psyched that you guys are into it. I mean, I hope you're into it. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, I think that somebody just posted recently some sort of touch point so we can all keep base with each other. But uh, so cool. So very cool. Yeah. So there's there's all kinds of fun stuff to check out there. Come join our group. We will let you in. As long as you're not a robot. Yep. And uh, you can email us at stillbuffering at maximumfun.org. Thank you to Maximum Fun for yeah. hosting our podcast as well as a plethora of other pleasurable podcasts. So go check those out, maximumfun.org. A of pleasurable podcasts. I like it. I'm going to stick with it. Like also, if you have the time, feel free. Uh, please review us on iTunes. Uh, we we really appreciate it when you do that. And uh, thank you to the novellas for our theme song, Baby, You Change Your Mind. Yeah. So this has been Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. I am a teenager. And I, I was, was two. two. Hi, I'm Lisa Hannawalt. And I'm Emily Heller. And if you're not listening to our podcast, Baby Geniuses, you're missing out on stuff like... Kamel Nanjiani solving the Zodiac murders. Oh, who's like... Would you ever go to a friend and you're like, Hey, could you lick all these lick all these envelopes for me? You'd be like, you're a serial killer. <laughs> I'm, definitely, I'm leaving right now. Guy Branham talking about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and it was, it was just a great moment of like, Oh no, I'm here, boys. Like, I'm on this side of the bench... Megan Amram talking about intimidating baristas. Just feel like they're always in character. Like, they're always in character as, like, cool hipster girl. Uh And I just want to break through that barrier. Plus, every week we explore a new Wikipedia page and talk to a crazy expert in the field of nonsense. Well, any any hack can make you not have a boner i mean that's it's about how you do it right and we're the only podcast with regular updates about martha stewart's pony or your money back we're not going to give them their money back are we Mm, no let's keep it yeah listen to our show every other monday on maximum fun yay Yay. maximumfun.org comedy and culture artist owned listener supported